Hey pillars and welcome back to another race recap. We're taking a look at how Ghent Wevelgem 2022 was won. So let's get right into it. Now, if you're just here for the race highlights, there will be a timestamp on screen. So feel free to skip ahead if you're here for just that. But if you want more information regarding the race, stats profile riders all that juicy information we're going to do that right now now taking a look at the course profile for Ghent Wevelgem 2022 we're starting in Ipera and finishing in Wevelgem today's race is 249 kilometers so in terms of a Belgian classic definitely a long one it only has 1315 meters of climbing but in terms of climbs there are short punchy cobble climbs that you would expect in a Belgium classic along with dirt road so it is a very entertaining uh Belgium classic right before Flanders so that being said the last four kilometers pancake flat in terms of the finish and take a look quickly at the top competitors who do we have coming off great form we have none other than walt van art uh, from jumbo visma uh, mate morich jasper philipson tim melier christophe laporte which is uh walt van art's teammate along with stephen kung Fawe jacobson casper askreen uh flanders winner as well matteo trentin uh danny van poppel Arno damar jasper stoyven uh, dylan van barrow uh, Pascal Ackerman, the list, Peter Sagan, Mats Pedersen, uh, just a lot of big hitters at today's uh, race. By the looks of the top competitors list, you can see there are a lot of hitters coming to this race. And in terms of who's coming off the best form, I would have to say it's Walt Van Aert or Matej Morovic. But I would say more Walt Van Aert, the fact that he won E3 uh, recently. So the fact that, you know, Walt Van Aert's team, Jumbo Visma, has such a good team around him. I could see him easily taking today's win. But then again, when it comes to a one-day classic, anything can happen and the race can unfold. Very different differently from what you think so with that being said we're gonna jump into the highlights right now now jumping into the race highlights with 84 kilometers to go the breakaway had a one minute time gap on the chasing peloton on the Kemmelberg you can see that an Innos rider goes down going onto the Kemmelberg just because everything bunches up the cadence is dropping so people become twitchy riders become twitchy it's so narrow with the support feed on the right hand side so you can see it's very hectic so that's to be expected and Wolfenart is leading the chasing peloton down the descent and you can see it's just one of the most majestic scenes during uh, the classic seasons but a lot of mechanicals but this breakaway only has 42 seconds on the peloton not a lot of big hitters in this uh, break so they will be caught eventually but like I was saying before a lot of mechanicals you can see Timo Hosen he goes uh, unfortunately had to get a new bike because his chain fell off his bike so you don't want your day to be wrecked because of mechanicals but anyways you can see the dirt roads just such a good race I love seeing the diversity between cobbles asphalt and dirt roads and you see the breakaway is basically going to get caught on the Monteberg uh, right before the Kemmelberg and everything is pretty much relaxed but then we have Casper Askren from Quickstep lighting it up we have Walt Van Aert on his wheel so these are two big hitters obviously they're going down and you can see that they're going to start ripping this peloton apart pretty soon which is what we see so Walt Van Aert tries doing these attacks uh, with 47 kilometers to go and he's trying to see who's going to come with him because obviously Walt Van Aert can't solo away from these top riders unless he has a his teammate so we tell you goes on the front uh, for Walt Van Aert and this is where the Jumbo Visma attack are happening they're going up the Kemmelberg again 34 kilometers left to go in the race and that's when Walt Van Aert pretty much unleashes his you know winning attack and the only people that can really respond are about four riders along with Askreen and his uh, teammate uh, Chris Laporte so basically Walt Van Aert is going to try to get at least you know maybe 30 seconds uh, from those chasers but when you have Askreen a Flanders winner last year um, you know Walt Van Aert is going to be brought back so he gets brought back pretty much after the descent and this this is where the selection of riders I would hope to come uh, would, which would be this situation right now. So, you know, you have Christophe Laporte uh, along with Walt Van Aert in this mix alongside Casper uh, Askreen. So this is where Walt Van Aert with 27 kilometers tries to go one more time, but he's already burned, I would say, at least three matches at this point, four matches. After Walt Van Aert's attack that a four-man breakaway basically goes up the front and luckily for Jumbo Visma, Christophe Laporte, Walt Van Aert's teammate, is represented in this move. So Walt Van Aert does not have to chase and no one wants to chase this four-man breakaway group because there's 23 kilometers so they're thinking it might get brought back slowly but this four-man breakaway group works extremely well together so we have Christoph Laporte big name along with Jasper Stoyven which is a Milano San Remo winner along with a Van Gestel from Total NLC and also Grimi from Antimalche so he's pretty uh, well known because he got second in the U23 world champ so you know we don't know how good of a form he could be but obviously getting second in the U23 world champs you know you're a pretty high caliber rider and I honestly didn't think he would be able to win the sprint because I was expecting Jasper Stoyven or Christoph Laporte to take it but he winds up really really early and you can see that Christoph Laporte was looking back and he just pretty much launched at a perfect time supposedly it was a head uh, wind finish in terms of the sprint so he just had enough of a space 
to win get into bubble game 2022 and for him with the you know i'm showing his results right now the only big result i can really see is the second at the world champ so the fact that he's able to win you know a belgium classic is very very impressive especially only being 21 years old so you know gear me uh hopefully i didn't butcher his name but from the country of ear tree you know they're definitely you know making a splash in terms of the world tour and getting a win like this is definitely definitely huge so definitely i did not think this is how the race would be won in terms of uh Grimi taking the win but he is a name to be reckoned with with the upcoming uh classic so i would love to see him continuing a winning streak if possible but just so out of left field in the sense that you know he was just at the right place right time in terms of the attack that actually stuck because you can see a lot of other riders like Askreen didn't get into this move so it didn't seem like the winning move but given the fact that no one wanted to chase it and you know they basically kept the lead for 30 seconds that was the time gap for over 24 kilometers so I think just a great win. Obviously, I think Christophe Laporte would be a little, you know, salty because he's always working for Walt Van Aert. So the fact that he could have won this race, uh, but obviously he didn't, uh, would probably sting a little bit. But I think it's a really great win for a rider that is very much on the come up. So Peller Rent analysis, I think Walt Van Aert, and I think Jumbo Visma, I have no complaints. I think they play their cards perfectly. Uh, the depth when it comes to classics, you know, Jumbo Visma always has the numbers in terms of riders now. Um, but I think they, they tried their best with Walt Van Aert going multiple times, being chased down. There's not much you can do. He tried one more time on the flats, and there's nothing you can do. So the fact that they had him represented with Christophe Laporte in terms of uh, team and he didn't chase, that was good to see. And then just not being able to clutch it at the sprint. You know, at the end of the day, after 200, and I'm pretty sure it's 259 kilometers or 249 kilometers of racing, you know, you can't really just, you know, say, oh, Christophe Laporte is getting guaranteed to win it. So, you know, lost at the sprint, but I think uh, Jumbo Visma played their cards extremely well and a great win for Anton Malche and for uh, Jeremy from Eritrea. So if the race was won, if this is how the race is won, it's just basically being in the right place, right time in terms of the move and truly going for it. And I think the fact that, you know, Christophe Laporte was in this move along with the Asper Stoyven, it was a good move to be in it. Obviously, like I said, I didn't think this was the winning move, but no one chased it down, and that's sometimes all you need is just people to question it. Time gap goes to 30 seconds, and if there's a headwind, no one wants to chase that. No one wants to go into no man's land and try to close the gap and bridge across. So that's how the race was won in terms of, uh, again, Welvigam 2022. I'm excited to see how Flanders plays out very soon. So if you guys did enjoy this video, smash the like button, subscribe to the channel, and until the next one, keep on pedaling.